Okay, welcome. This lesson is going to be on plotting polygons on the on the plane, the coordinate plane. Uh, but we're actually going to start without the without the grid, and uh, I want you to get a feel for the properties that you've already learned. We're just going to review those without the grid, and then uh, if we have time, we'll take a look at plotting them with the with the points. So first thing is get into GeoGebra. I'm in the standard window. I'm just going to hide my algebra window for this one. I don't really need it. And then I'll hide the axes for now. So I have a blank grid that I'm looking at or a blank uh, sheet of paper. And we'll start with the parallelogram. There's a few ways to make a parallelogram in GeoGebra and I want to show you a couple ways because I think they're all important. But I'm going to start with the one that I like the best and I think is the easiest to do. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a random, a random grid, a random line segment by going up to the segment tool and then just click and drag and that'll be one side of the parallelogram AB. Okay, for it to be a parallelogram we need an opposite side that's congruent and parallel. So there's a, there's a couple ways to do this but what I would like to do with this lesson is I want to use a vector, the vector tool that we used before to create my new points. That'll make, that'll give me more control over what the parallelogram looks like. So we're going to translate an object by a vector. So it's asking me to asking me to select the object I like. I'm going to select A, and then use the vector. Now I don't have a vector in the screen yet, so I'm going to create one now. I'll just click and drag, click. I'm sorry, not drag. Click and then click again, and let's say about that much, and then that tells me where I'm going to put the new point. So I'm going to put it right there. Notice what it did. It made the new point based on the vector. If I move around the vector, you'll see that point A will move with it. That. There we go. See, so point A will go wherever I put the vector. So it's telling me where to go. Now the advantage of this is once I make the vector, I can drag the whole vector down if I need to. If once I make the vector, then I can use that vector over and over again. So I'm going to use the same vector to, to translate point B. So here's point B. I'll go to the vector tool again, point B, and then I highlighted it. Now I highlight the uh, vector and look at that, it translated the same way it translated A, it translated B. That is very convenient for making a parallelogram because now all I need to do is connect the points and I have myself a parallelogram. Like that. And there we go, that's that's the great way of making a parallelogram. Um, if I want to move the parallelogram around, I want to make it bigger, smaller, I use the vector. Instead of messing with the points, I just change the vector. I could drop the parallelogram lower, I can go to the left, I move it up, any way you like. If you want to color it, let's go ahead and color this, make it make it look pretty. We'll go to our polygon tool and just click on the points and close it and change your color if you like. I'll pick a nice color here and you can even change your line style, darker, thinner, whatever you like. So we'll leave it at that. So that is the creation of parallelogram. Works very well. Get rid of that random point. And again, the goal the goal here is to uh, create the vector to control the parallelogram. Okay, that is one way to make the parallelogram. Another way to make the parallelogram um, is going to be using the parallel line tool. So here we go. So first thing you want to do is create that line segment one more time. And now that we've established that line segment, what we want to do is create a point that is parallel, so we'll pick a random point, we'll pick it here, and then we will uh, create a parallel line. So go to the parallel line, perpendicular, uh, parallel, there it is, parallel. Highlight the point, highlight the line second below it, and then that'll give you a parallel line. All right, so that gives us a first set of parallel lines. Now the we need to make a second set, and the tricky part here is that the second set of parallel lines uh, the segments have to be congruent to each other. So I need to make, let me make my uh, my third line here. So I'm going to connect G and E and make a line out of that. A line through two points. Okay, that'll make that line. Now I need to make a line, another line that is parallel to the one I just created. So same same tool, parallel line. This time I highlight F and then I highlight the parallel line, the line I just created. That'll make my uh, new parallel line. So, almost done. 
Now what we want to do is the intersection tool, which is underneath the point tool. Highlight these two lines, and that'll create a point at the intersection. There we go. All right, so now I have all my points. The problem is I have all these lines that I really don't want. I just want a parallelogram, so I want to hide the lines. And uh, so what all I got to do here is click on one of the lines, and Control G will hide it, and it'll leave behind the points. That's what I want, and I'll hide this one too because I don't need that one. And it looks like I made two of them. There we go. And so what that just leaves me with is the points, and then you go ahead and connect the dots like we did before using the segment tool. And that'll give you another parallelogram. Now, we can move the parallelogram around. Remember, the parallelogram is controlled by those parallel lines. So if you move it around, you don't have too many options here. You, you can move point F. F was, uh, no, actually, what's the point that we create? Yes, F is the independent point, so we can move that around. Notice how that other side is staying fixed. This side is staying fixed as I move F. And then I can move around G. I can move around G like that. And then E is also movable. Notice that no matter how I change it, the lines, the line segments stay parallel. The opposite angles are congruent. Um, the opposite sides are parallel. The definition of a parallelogram. Okay, one more thing on parallelogram, and uh, let's reveal the grid by clicking on the grid tool. If you don't see the grid, by the way, um, let's see. Let me just make that grid a little smaller. Uh, I can make my grid smaller by just using the roll, the roll um, ball on my mouse. Let me get smaller and shorter. So that that seems like a good size. Now, to f I need to figure out slopes to determine if these are parallel. So what I will do is I will take these points and put them in convenient spots. Like I'm going to put this one over here, and maybe I'll take the J, and it's not cooperating. Let's see, I'll put that right there, and this one right there. There we go. Okay, E was a controller. Okay, so that gives me a parallelogram, and maybe I'll just stretch it a little bit more like that. And then we can see that the top and the bottom are parallel. They have a slope of zero. But what about the left and the right? Can, are we sure those are parallel? And we do that using slope. So if you start at F and you go to E, you go up 2, over 2. That slope is 1. This has a slope of 1. This one over here, you go up to over two. That also has a slope of one. Slopes are the same. That means the lines are parallel. The segments are parallel. And no matter what you do with it, if you stretch it out a little bit more, no matter where you put it on the grid, you're going to see you're going to go up two, over one, two, three, four, five, up two, over five. Slopes are two fifths. Stays the same. And you could do the same thing to the other sides if you like. And you're going to get that same. The opposite sides are parallel. Okay, now let's take a look at the rhombus. I'm just going to slide this up a little bit to give us some room. And the rhombus actually is a little trickier than it might seem. Uh, it's pretty straightforward diagonals, the, as long as they're the perpendicular uh, bisectors of one another, then you know you're going to get a diagonal based on the, uh, you're going to get a rhombus based on the diagonals. So let's use a grid first. Uh, we'll do the easy method first, and then I want to show you that how would you do it without the grid? So for the grid, if you have a grid, it makes it very simple. All you need is a line segment tool. Click on a point, drag, and let's see, one, two, three, four is fine. And click, make that line segment. Now it's got to bisect it, so the second diagonal has got to go through the midpoint of the first one. And it doesn't have to be the same length. It doesn't have to be four units. In fact, let's make it six units. And we'll click, and we'll go three, then another three, and those are the diagonals of the rhombus. And if you were to connect the points, you get a rhombus here. And let me just finish connecting these up. There we go. And finally, there's a rhombus. Now, the problem with this, and we know it's a rhombus because the side, the opposite sides are parallel. You can do that using the slope. One, two, one, two, three. So that's two thirds over here. This would be one, two, one, two, three, two thirds for this one. So they both have slopes of two thirds over there. This one you would go up two and then left one, two, three. So this is negative two thirds and negative two thirds. So those two, those pairs match up. So we know it's a, it's a rhombus. Um, we could even measure the lengths to make sure they're all the same. In fact, uh, if you click on a side and right click and show label, uh, not label, I think um, 
I think we have to go to Object Properties and show value. If you show the value, then it'll show you the value of that line segment. And just two more. And you can see that they're all the same. One more to go. Okay. Object Properties, Show Label, Value. All right, so we know it's a rhombus because all the sides are the same. Uh, and opposite sides are parallel. So parallelogram, it's a special parallelogram with all equal sides. Okay, the problem with this method, and here's the biggest problem with this method. When I plotted the points, they were all freehand. I moved, I put, I put them down anywhere I like. It's no longer rhombus as soon as I do this. So there is a problem with plotting it freehand. Um, so let's try to do it uh, in a better way where we don't have to uh, rely on plotting free point. So to help us, we'll, let's hide the grid lines for now. And this time we're going to create, we'll start the same way. We'll create a line segment, a random line segment. There we go. Now we need to bisect this. So we'll go ahead and find the midpoint. And then now that we have the midpoint, we need a perpendicular bisector. We need to cut that in a 90 degree angle. So we'll go to perpendicular line, highlight the P, highlight the segment. Okay, we're going to try to finish this up here. Now we're going to try to create the second segment, that the second diagonal of the rhombus. So we're going to create a random point on that perpendicular line that we just created. It doesn't matter where. You try, try not to make the same distance away, otherwise it'll be a square. So maybe, I don't know, right about here looks good. Okay, we're going to use circles to actually create the second line segment. And we're going to use the bottom point, point O, as the center of the circle. And that new point that we just made, Q, we're going to make that the on the circumference. So we'll go to the circle tool and pick circle with center. Pick O as your center and go out to Q. And I think you can almost see where we're going with this. If you look at this circle, O, the distance from O to Q is going to be the same distance from O to this point right here. So we're going to make a point right at this spot. And we'll do that using the intersection tool. So intersect two objects. We want the circle and we want the line segment. And it actually made two points, one on top of each other over here. So now that gives us the line segment that we need. So we'll go ahead and create a segment right on top of that. And you can't see it, but it's there. In fact, if you want to change the color, change the color. No, I didn't want the point. I want the line segment. So try that again. Um, so let's hide, let's actually hide the perpendicular line. Highlight the perpendicular line, control G to highlight that. And then we'll go ahead and make that segment one more time. There we go. Okay, and then while we're at it, let's hide the circle because we don't need it. It served its purpose. And uh, let's see, I thought I hit, hit this already. I'm going to try that one more time. Okay, there we go. That just leaves us with the um, points we need to make the rhombus. So go ahead and connect the points and you will have yourself a rhombus that no matter what you do to it, changing it, its size, it will stay a rhombus. So let me just make a polygon out of it. And it looks like I lost my diagonal, so I'm just going to make one more line segment. There we go. I want to get the diagonal back. Okay, so there's my there's my rhombus, and the difference between this rhombus and the one on the left is if I take this rhombus and move it around, I think I'll have to use, and there we go. It's going to stay a rhombus. No matter what, it's going to stay a rhombus. So there you go. That's how you do a rhombus. Finally, I want to wrap this up with a, with a kite. And with a kite, uh, no parallel lines, and two con two pairs of congruent sides. So let's start off the same way. You make a line segment. Uh, you want to bisect that so you find the midpoint. Perpendicular line. And uh, this time we don't have to worry about uh, bisecting the other line. That's why we needed the circle. We wanted to get the radii. In this one, it doesn't really matter where it's cut. So I can just plot two random points, one here, and as long as it's not the same distance away, maybe I'll put it over here, um, then all I got to do is make those line segments. And I'm going to have a kite out of that. Like that. And just make a polygon out of it. And 
and change your color if you like. 